For an external perspective, we have a customer, a terrific customer from ConocoPhillips, um, Aftab Ahmed, who is the program manager, emerging digital technology for functions at ConocoPhillips. So welcome Aftab to the show. Good morning. Uh, everybody has technical problems. I'll, I'll talk about that in our journey as well. We just push right through. <laughs> hey, Aftab, you've been leading digital, digital transformation efforts at ConocoPhillips for a few years now. So could you um, share how your automation journey has evolved and why you are now pursuing this strategy of a robot for every person? Sure, so, um, you know, ConocoPhillips is one of the world's largest oil and gas companies. And so innovating is nothing new to us. We've been doing that across our global operations for many years. Um, but the concept of digital transformation, especially in the back office, is a relatively new one uh, for our industry and for our company. And so we started our journey um, with RPA just a little over two years ago and selected UiPath. Uh, and we saw it as the gateway to intelligent automation or perhaps what we now call hyper automation. Um, fast forward two years, we've got more than 100 automations in, uh, in production. Uh, we have a, a successful and growing RPA program, uh, an established uh, center of excellence in our IT organization. Um, and so we're kind of ready to move to the next step. Um, then at the end of the last year, um, UiPath released Studio X, um, which really started unlocking the, the tool to be capable for end users to explore automations and build automations for themselves. Um, you know, you, then you go into, into this year, and of course, we're all hit by the, the coronavirus, um, and suddenly the, uh, the appetite and the impetus for digitally transforming, uh, improving productivity, increasing efficiency is, is paramount. Um, my industry in particular, oil and gas, is, is struggling right now. Um, not only do we have the demand destruction uh, associated with the coronavirus, but we also have um, some supply, oversupply in the market um, that were really forcing us to try and lower our overall cost point. And so uh, with all of those pieces in place, um, we tested out some attended automations at the end of last year, had good success with those. Um, and so we're at the point where we can say, you know, we have the ability to take on citizen development, attended automation. Um, and so really, we're talking about a robot for every person at that stage. Um, add to that, we have users that are hungry to have the opportunity to automate uh, their work areas. Uh, it's almost the perfect recipe for, for this initiative at this time. So Aftab, um, what, you know, what are the tangible benefits that you're finding that it brings to you know, your company and your workforce um, in tandem? So I probably categorize them in kind of three forms. Um, firstly, there's uh, improved productivity. So the idea of um, automating something at your local um, workflow level, every individual user, um, you know, that's something which typically is some of the smaller opportunities perhaps in our automation profile um, that may not merit the full scale uh, professional IT development, um, but with end user development that can be done quite quickly. Um, that stuff can be really lead to a lot of things being automated that you otherwise would not automate. Um, second is one of scale. Um, I think earlier, um, I think Brandon was talking about how uh, if you build a, a, an automation, a robot in one location of the business, then you can leverage it to the broader organization. And so you can benefit individual work groups, uh, multiple work groups, or even the entire organization. Um, and that focus on technology, technology adoption is really a, a big focus area for my company. Um, and using technology like UiPath and uh, Robot for Everyone is right on point with that strategic uh, priority. Um, thirdly, I think about streamlining the automation development. So um, if you can start the initial design and coding with the end user who can maybe get you 60, 70% of the way there, um, but then based on complexity or, or risk, you might have it completed by professional developers uh, to build the, the right resilience in, um, you can greatly accelerate your time to getting things put into production. So all three of those are really important, but I think at the end of the day, the most important for me uh, is how we can actually empower our end users to explore automation um, and help them to find use cases in their work processes that we otherwise might not even have automated. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we have some 10,000 plus employees um, who we want to empower to bring their best ideas to work. That's a key innovation principle in my company. Uh, and a bot for every person approach is a catalyst for that. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on how the technology helps each of those employees think about how to apply technology to their daily jobs? Sure, so, um, you know, as we started our journey and explored use cases, probably one of the, uh, the biggest challenges in matching the capabilities of the tool 
which are best known by our technical personnel, um, to the nature of the business process, which is, of course, best known by our business subject matter experts. Um, over time, as these two groups become more familiar with each other's areas of expertise, um, you can find that you know, each subsequent automation is typically a higher quality uh, and delivered more quickly. But that takes time because you have to prioritize your opportunities and, and balance that with the resource constraints across the organization. Um, with citizen development, you can really expose a much wider audience uh, of business SMEs to the capabilities of the tool. Uh, and that in turn will enhance their ability to match the use cases in their area uh, to the business uh, processes and the technology. Uh, and I mentioned we have that long tail of opportunities. A lot of uh, automation opportunities that maybe only are uh, dozens of hours uh, that can be saved or a specific type of user experience that we're trying to work on, um, where COE type led development may not make economic sense. Um, but having a robot for everyone, kind of that automation first mindset in the employees, uh, really enables them to think about how they do their daily tasks and their business processes uh, in the most efficient manner. So, Aftab, how did you get the program rolling? How, you know, give <laughs> advice to those just getting started. How do you how do you get that ro get going? <clears throat> sure. So. Um, you know, we, like I said, we've been going for a couple of years. Um, and last year, we piloted several attended automations um, and had various of our technical and non-technical personnel um, kind of trialing the Studio X uh, product when that was launched um, at the end of uh, 2019. Um, from there, we built a roadmap for 2020 um, that really is focused on a phased rollout uh, on a monthly basis where we expand the set of users that we're going to expose to the tool. Um, the initial wave was, was carefully selected. We targeted IT professionals. Um, because we think that's a, a, a big set to make sure that we kind of empower and show how this tool uh, can be another one in their toolkit for all the things they're working on. Uh, and some of the power users in our business uh, that we felt would be most adept to um, you know, citizen development building bots. Uh, we gave them training. Uh, a lot of that came from UiPath uh, and formed a community network so that they could share their experiences as they trial the tool uh, and build automations. Um, but at the same time, we've also been building our governance and monitoring capabilities. Um, those are important because we want to make sure that as we expand, we're doing so in a, a very deliberate and controlled way that delivers value to the company. Um, you know, we don't just want people having uh, mm -hmm. bots for the sake of having bots. We want them to improve productivity, improve user experience, or deliver some other form of benefit to the company. Um, at the end of each wave of users coming on board, we're running um, two-day botathons. Um, so this is where developers in the COE work alongside some of the end users uh, and start building real automations for use in the business. Um, for example, in our first botathon, uh, just in finance alone, which is actually a group that I represent, um, we built some four automations that were built in just a couple of days um, that really you know, are very close to being production ready. Uh, and these are things like um, you know, tagging electronic land documents with fields that detail title and ownership so that later on you can uh, find them more easily and help with <coughs> correspondence with your various stakeholders. Um, nothing overtly complex, uh, but things which today are done in a very manual way. Um, automate it a couple of days, you end up using the automation again and again and again. Um, and that speed of build is really a very enticing part of the, the Robot for Everyone initiative. Awesome. Great advice, Aftab. Uh, it is. Th thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and apologize for the technical difficulties, but we appreciate that you stuck around and you were able to help us um, understand um, that really what your journey was like with a robot for every person. So thank you so much. Thanks, Aftab. Absolutely, very welcome.